Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our August, uh, April, rather, Leon County uh, Commission meeting. Thank you, commissioners, for being here. At this time, I will ask Commissioner Minor if he will introduce our invocator at this time. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. I've got the distinct pleasure and honor of uh, introducing to everyone uh, Elder Dr. Chris A. Burney, who's the pastor of the Greater St. Mark Primitive Baptist Church. Dr. Burney. Thank you, sir. Would you please give us kindness of today's invitation? Oh, gracious and eternal Father, we say thank you. We thank you for your many, many, many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Oh God, as we come down to handle the business of this great county, we ask for your presence, your leadership, and your guidance in our words, thoughts, and deeds. This we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Bernie. Uh, Commissioner Minor, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone, for participating in our invocation. Thank you again, Reverend Bernie, for that very uh, timely invocation. We are very excited and pleased to have with us today our representative, Allison Tant. Great to see you. We're going to ask her if she will come to the podium for a special presentation. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioners. I'm here today to present you with the proclamation that, or the resolution that was passed by the Florida Legislature honoring our community and our beloved um, community on the bicentennial this year. The Tallahassee, City of Tallahassee, Leon County, and the establishment of our state government was here. It is a profound honor to be able to celebrate the rich history that we have here together. In 1821, the Florida became a U.S. territory, and a few years later, in 1823, the Legislative Council of the Territory appointed a commissioners to select the most eligible and convenient location for the seat of government for our territory. Prior to that, they would have legislative committee meetings and legislative hearings um, and, and, and session in either Pensacola or St. Augustine, and they would travel by boat around the peninsula of Florida to do those meetings. They decided that was dangerous and cumbersome and timely and decided to send two counselors to find an eligible spot, both leaving their homes from Pensacola and the other from, from St. Augustine. And that was Dr. William Simmons of Pensacola and John Lee Williams of St. Augustine, who at that time were the two most populous places in Florida, who then met in the middle. And where they met was they first set up a camp in St. Mark's to scout the perfect location and where they found was us. They decided near an old Seminole village of Tallahassee, Tallufa, and close to a small cascade we now know as Cascade Park, which is the jewel of our park system right here in Tallahassee. In March of 1824, Governor Duval proclaimed that the Legislative Council would hold its next meeting in Tallahassee in May of 1824. One square mile of federal land was provided by Act of Congress, which became our Capitol Complex where we are today, and became the city of Tallahassee. In December of 1824, the boundaries of Leon County were drawn. And now, um, 200 years later, this is a monumental year for all of us here. One of the things that made my ability to present this in the House was that as only as I was preparing the remarks and looking into this wonderful history of ours, that it occurred to me that the last legislature to meet in the old capital was in 1977, when my husband, Barry Richard, was a member of the House. And here I am, in this year, honoring our bicentennial, back in that old chamber, conducting the people's business 50 years later. So how wonderful is that? It might not be quite 50. Um, I, well, I could go on and on and on about the wonders of this community that I treasure that I love. 
Um, we are filled with so many people, thought leaders, policy masters, brilliant academicians, talented tradeswomen and women, students learning at world-class universities, artists, authors, and renowned scientists, civil rights leaders, and championship sports teams. I am going to stop and just say I will end with a note of gratitude that I get to be, that I was able to do this in the chamber and that I am able to bring this wonderful proclamation to all of you with a complete unanimous support from our legislature. So thank you. Thank you, Representative uh, Tant. Let's, let's give a, I think that deserves a round of applause. I'm so proud of our community. We have so much wonder and goodness here, and it is such a treat to be able to speak to the wonders of, what, of the good things that are here. So thank you. Thank Did we get you. to get a picture? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and let me say this before I go to the commissioners. I had the honor of actually being in the House this year when Representative Allison Tant uh, read the proclamation to the city and the county. And it was, it was very awesome. And, and she was, of course, brilliant as she is today. So we appreciate it. Re uh, Commissioner Minor, then Commissioner Welch. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Representative Tan. Thanks to you and the legislature for, for making this happen. Um, as, as you said, I mean, uh, this is really a special community, uh, both the city of Tallahassee and, and Leon County. I mean, it's, um, we, are, we are blessed yes, to be here. And um, we have the fortune of serving constituents that live here, but this is an amazing community that works very hard. And I also wanted to thank you. I mean, Leon County is well served to have you in the Florida House. Thank you. And we were Appreciate grateful for that. that. Thank and you. I, um, every gift. time I work with you, you are gangbusters, uh, getting <laughs> stuff done at the Capitol. Um, despite some very formidable challenges, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of a crazy environment to work in, but you get things done. And I uh, want to thank you for, for this resolution, thank the legislature for the unanimous support, and I want to thank you for your service to the people of Leon County. Amen. It's a gift. Thank you, Commissioner yeah. Welch. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair, and I just want to echo those sentiments. Representative Tant, you do such an incredible job representing us at that next level across the street. Uh, was there any consideration given to asking the legislature to take a commemorative boat trip to Tallahassee? <laughs> I'm not going to get on a very slow boat. I can't do that. I don't well, have time. So, <laughs> well, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, to get uh, unanimous support for such a, such a proclamation kind of shows that the folks across the street even though at times they may not act like it, they really do love us here in Leon County, and they appreciate the historical significance of our capital being right here. And, uh, and obviously, you, you do such a good job over there, and we're very proud of you, and thank you so much. You've helped me on so many issues, oh, yeah. and we know all. So, I love working with each and every one of you. It's a yeah, gift. You're great, and thank you. And this is a cool proclamation we'll put in my office. I will say one last little thing, and that is that there, the sheer number of legislators on both sides of the aisle, as well as staff in the House and Senate, and as well as could, were just extremely profoundly touched by being back in that chamber and listening to the history of how we got here. And I think it was it's very memorable to them. And the number of people who've come to me and said that was one member who was termed out, Chuck Clemens from uh, Gainesville, said to me, that day is going to be the thing I, I remember for the rest of my life. And so this is the impact that we have, and there are so many of my colleagues who have talked about how much they enjoy being here during the session months. Awesome. So that's good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any, anybody else? I think probably, uh, Representative, if we would ask you to maybe come up and join think, us for a picture, okay. you think that'd be okay? Yeah. And commissioners, if we'll... Let's give her another hand. 
<laughs> Thank you again. Okay, now we, I would like to call on Commissioner Welch for a special recognition to Mr. Joseph Simon, who is a volunteer firefighter of the year for the entire state of Florida. What an honor. All right. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have uh, the honor of presenting a proclamation for uh, Mr. Simmons here, who uh, is what, a Bradfordville Volunteer Fire Department uh, outstanding employee. I mean, let's talk about, we're talking about locally and national, or and statewide. So um, I'm going to read a proclamation. Whereas Joseph Simmons has, com has a combined seven years volunteering with Lake Jackson and now Bradfordville Volunteer Fire Department, and whereas Joseph is the first to volunteer for almost every special assignment and runs more calls than 95% of other volunteer members, and whereas Joseph cares about the team at Bradfordville Fire Rescue and often calls just to check on his fellow volunteer firefighters, and whereas Joseph truly cares about the community and is often the first to help a resident returning from the hospital who needs extra help getting inside or to volunteer at a community event, and whereas Joseph Simmons is the 2023 Jack Heron Volunteer Firefighter of the Year in Leon County, and whereas Joseph Simmons received the 2024 Fire Service Award as the Volunteer Firefighter of the Year in the state of Florida. Now, therefore, we, the Leon County Board of County Commissioners, do honor Joseph Simmons, dated this ninth day of April 2024. Thank you, Mr. Simmons. Uh, let's give him a round of applause. Obviously, uh, I know this commission really, you know, supports our firefighters. We love our volunteer firefighters, Chief, and we thank you for all you do and your willingness to step up and serve our community, uh, you know, all throughout our unincorporated areas and some of our far-stretched areas. And, um, you know, service is at the heart of what we all do, and that's why we're here. And, Mr. Simmons, you embody that. So thank you. If you'd like to say a few words, that'd be great. I'd like to thank everyone for coming out today. This is truly a blessing. I thank all my fellow brothers and sisters throughout the departments and TFD. Um, thank you all for your support. And I always remember, if you ever need anything, don't hesitate to call us. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Simmons. All right. Thank you all so much. If, if you just stand there a minute, Mr. Simmons, if you stand, stand there a minute, Commissioner O'Keefe. Mr. Simmons, I just want to echo thank you. Um, you're, uh, you clearly deserve this award, um, and I, being such an example of a volunteer firefighter who, on a volunteer basis, steps up for what others are paid for to make sure that your neighbors and our uh, often unincorporated areas um, have valuable resources in their time of need, um, and just want to thank you. Thank you is not enough. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner O'Keefe. And I just, first of all, I apologize for mispronouncing your name. <laughs> I, I think it's my, it might be spelled wrong on my agenda. Uh, but congratulations. We certainly value all the service that you provide. And we certainly honor you as Volunteer Firefighter of the Year for the entire state. What an amazing honor. So thank you for protecting our health, safety, and welfare right here in Leon County. We appreciate you. Okay, let's give him another round of applause. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Welch, for presenting that as well. Uh, Mr. County uh, Administrator. Do we have any citizens to be here at open consent or non agenda items? Thank you, Madam Chair. We have two speaker cards in under con assistance to be heard on consent and non agenda items. The first, Stanley Sims. Mr. Sims. Madam Chair, uh, Stanley Sims, 1320 Avondale Way. 
I'm here under special request of one of my constituents. As you know, I detail cars throughout Leon County. And about two months ago, a lady, seasoned in her age, pulled me to the side and said, Mr. Sims, I want to thank you for one, is for sticking up for them women up there with them men. I said, what do you mean, ma'am? She said, we ain't got but one elected woman and one elected uh, appointed official, and someone got to hold the road. And she said, I play games with a couple of guys just like they play with. And she said, and every now and then, we have to show our strength and our integrity. And she thanked me because the guys used to jab her because they thought that, that I only stuck up for you. But I told her the story of me and Miss Cassidy, how she was dressed down in shorts and saw me in that same Publix. And she said she went back and she had to play board games. And she with those guys. And she said, I whooped their tail. She said, they think we're playing board games. And she said, for the record, Mr. Sims, we were playing board games. What is my point? God is God. And he won't change. Everyone who see God's in his own particular way honors them. And all of your constituents from various ages, religious backgrounds, are watching you. But you know, one thing she said as her caregiver was helping her in, you know, load the groceries, but it was one thing that was clear, Mr. O'Keefe, she called all the shots. <laughs> you know, nothing moved till she said so. She said, I think Commissioner Cummins know the old golden rule. And she said, it ain't what you do, it's how you do it. Thank you, Commissioner Cummins. I explained to her that I can't give you these because they're ethical, so we're going to give them down to the ladies down in the clerk office. I owe them some flavors, so you know, I want to work my little thing, my magic. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh Mr. Sims, Mr. County Administrator. Thank you, Madam Chair. Next speaker, Max Epstein. Mr. Epstein. Hey, how you doing? Well, thanks, y'all. Uh, I know we're going to be talking about Lake Munson here in a second, but I did want to bring up one um, concerning issue that I have noticed. Um, just about every time I meet with commissioners these days, one of the very first things they say after we've talked to them is, have you spoken with the other commissioners? And then some form of what do they think? Are they going to do something? And that happened a couple times with our meetings before this um, for Lake Munson. And it seems to be a troubling precedent because as far as I know, that is not in accordance with Sunshine Law and there isn't supposed to be discussion between the commissioners. Um, maybe I could be wrong, but it's something I've noticed. It's not new, and it is happening more and more frequently. And it seems to me that we should be able to discuss these issues one-on-one -on -one without discussing what the other folks are thinking. So I just wanted to bring that to y'all's attention. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Epstein. Mr. Cabinet Administrator. Thank you, Madam Chair. That's the uh, only items. Mr. Epstein also has a uh, speaker card in on item number 13. And certainly, uh, Madam Chair, you could take that up. 
uh, after I introduce that item or at this time, whatever's your, your preference. That item, item 13, has been pulled by uh, Commissioner Proctor from consent. Okay, thank you, Mr. County Administrator. So item 13 under, con under the consent agenda has been pulled. Yes. Okay. So what I'd like to do at this time, uh, Mr. County Administrator and Commissioners, is address the consent agenda excluding item 13. I'd like to entertain a motion to accept. So okay. Move. <laughs> Moved by Commissioner Minor, second by Commissioner Welch. All those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. And I vote aye. Uh, hearing no opposition, it passed. Uh, Mr. County Administrator, you Thank want you. to introduce item number 13? Absolutely. Thank you, Madam Chair. Item number 13 provides a status update on the implementation of the ongoing efforts related to the Lake Munson, Munson Action Plan approved by the board back in October. And uh, we're happy to answer any questions you might have. We do have one speaker card, as I mentioned. Madam Chair. Yes, please. Uh, Max Epstein. All right, y'all. Well, thank you again for having me here. I'm here to talk about uh, Lake Munson. Um, thank you to the folks who came out to our meeting. Really appreciate it. Um, and I wanted to bring up a uh, Bill Proctor's uh, suggestion to hold a workshop about Lake Munson, a joint city-county workshop, but it could start from here. That was promised back in October 2022, the Blueprint Board. Um, it's a way for you to invite a lot of people to come and actually talk, DEP, FWC, hear it from them. Um, but I wanted to talk about what's in your actual agenda and the suspended sediment that was released after the hurricane. Y'all remember I sent an email on September 2nd warning that opening those gates would send sediment straight down to Bacala Springs, and that's exactly what happened. Um, there, the water was not clear. There was only two feet of visibility. That means all of that sediment that everyone was actually resuspended and then flushed downstream. Uh, my conversations with FWC. Uh, there were four of them on the call. Three of them did not want to reopen those gates. They wanted to see a full pool on that lake and to keep it full. Um, so there is a definite disagreement between what we're hearing in your agenda item and what happened. So right now, there is an unknown amount of sediment that was stirred up by that hurricane, the PCBs, everything else that has been flushed downstream instead of keeping those gates closed. I just spoke with Andy Strickland, who is the FWC's invasive plant uh, manager who is on this, this uh, project. And uh, he spoke about the plan to close the gates in May slowly. The county wants to close them slowly, one foot at a time. He said that's never been done in North Florida, Northwest Florida. And the best way is to just close the gates and let them fill up. Um, we also asked at um, the Science Advisory Committee to talk about this extended drawdown that went through the wet season. We asked for any sort of evidence that this had been done before and what the benefits are, and we were told that there is none. Um, so you need to know what's happening with this extended drawdown and the closing of these gates slowly is an experiment. It has not been proven. Um, so, you know, I, I'm not really sure what to do at this point other than hold a meeting where we can all discuss this stuff. And I'd like to hear about why we let the sediment go straight down to Wakola Springs. And, um, <clears throat> you know, closing those gates slowly is going to create a warm body of water that's very susceptible to algae growth. The fact is, we all need to have a forum, a place where we can talk about these things in an open forum, invite all the parties, and have a real discussion because, and I need you all to pick up the phone, call FWC, and have an interest in all this. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Epstein. We appreciate it, Mr. Mr. County Administrator. 
Yes, Madam Chair, as usual, we're happy to answer any questions you might have. And I believe uh, Commissioner Poole. Commissioner Proctor. Commissioner Proctor, would you like to address? Thank you, Madam Chair. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, commissioners, one and all. Um, the comments brought up by um, Ms. Epstein, uh, actually, it does mirror uh, our conversations two years ago. And we did commit to having a sit down. But as I looked at the news on yesterday and, and saw that $800,000 had come in and I saw um, um, I was supposed to write down the news yesterday looking, standing tall and proud, uh, talking about the $800,000 that would be deployed to clean up the, um, I guess, the south end of Lake Jackson. Um, I knew that this matter was here. Uh, it's not that um, Great Lake Jackson uh, does not deserve the 800000 It's just that we do owe a conversation uh, to Munson. And I believe, Madam Chair, you were at the town hall meeting uh, earlier this year as we heard um, a tremendous presentation coming from the scientists who had been amassed as a part of their um, uh, artillery of intellect that is making a compelling argument and the compellingness of the argument is competitive to uh, what we've heard from. Uh, and we're getting third party stuff. We're getting told by staff. But if there is a way, commissioners, that we can get uh, the Florida uh, uh, um, game warden, what you call that company, what's that? The Fish and Wildlife Commission. That's the one. If we can get them at the table that commissioners as policymakers can hear, and we're getting staff uh, talk and all of that. And now, here comes Lake Jackson from out of nowhere. It's the star of the news. And um, we can't leave this in abeyance, um, just dangling. And another lake comes up uh, and gives a whole bunch of money and talk and love. We want to keep loving on this issue. And uh, I like to make a motion before we are make as a part of the motion of adopting this matter that we would uh, please, 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 please um, do a sit down. Um, uh, what's that thing called? Have a workshop. Is that yeah, what that's what I'm trying to say. We have a, a workshop with the parties of uh, of uh, their folk, uh, uh, gang warden folk, and our folk. And we're not trying to accuse. We're really trying to get to a solution. What best can we do? So that would be my motion in adopting the matter that we add to it a, uh, a workshop coming soon. The staff to work on um, organizing a workshop. Is that your motion? Yes, ma'am. And accept the report? Yes, ma'am. Is there a second to uh, Commissioner Proctor's motion? <clears throat> Okay, thank you, Commissioner uh, O'Keefe. Let me ask our county administrator if he can address it. I know we have a, another preliminary report here, and I believe we'll have a final one coming up in a couple of months on sure. the anti drawdown. Am I correct? Yes, you're okay. correct, uh, Madam Chair. Um, obviously, very happy to, um, and the board always obviously has the prerogative to schedule a workshop at any time you like on, on any issue you like, and certainly from a staff standpoint. Be happy to facilitate that and have a whoever you'd like in attendance. I would just remind the board that uh, you've been over this issue exhaustively over the past few years, as demonstrated in, in your agenda item. And uh, the technical um, uh, information has been presented to you, and you have approved an action plan, which we're actively working on, which um, is a very comprehensive action plan. Um, so and, and every six months, in the interest of transparency, we've been bringing you these updates. Um, and again, I think we continue to hear some of the same issues as we attempt to implement this plan. So by all means, the board can do that. I would recommend if you have any questions, at least maybe to determine whether you want to have a workshop. We have Anna Padilla here. Very happy to answer any questions um, that you might have uh, on anything related to the item before you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, Mr. County Administrator, uh, Commissioner Caban, and <clears throat> Commissioner Proctor. Thank you, 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Lake Munson has been an issue over the last 18 months, 16 months as I've been elected that we have worked, our office has worked extensively with staff. And you know, for those of you who know me in this room, I am not hesitant to um, question staff and their approaches and motives on, on, on other topics. And I will sub sit up here confidently and say that I am very comfortable with Lake Munson's current action plan. We, we had a commitment to extend the drawdown, which will end on May 1st. And then from my conversations that I've had with Ms. Anapidia, is that it takes 12 to 18 months for the lake to basically restabilize after the drawdown. Uh, at that point, we will see if, from my understanding, if the drawdown was effective in compacting the sediment and if the nutrients are under the daily maximum load. So what I don't want to do, um, and I, I appreciate the support from Commissioner Proctor and my, my colleagues about wanting to get behind this issue, but what, what makes me a little bit hesitant is I don't want to veer from the current plan to where we consistently have to backtrack and that we never really fulfill one plan or the next and we're kind of just running in circles. Mm -hmm. So um, my recommendation um, was going to be to accept that, accept um, staff's recommendation with the, with the one change of having the next status report come back in 12 months versus 24 months. So that way it gives some of the vegetation and it gives time for some of the vegetation in the lake to die off. It gives time for the lake to kind of restabilize for some of the, um, the, the mammals and animals and fish and wildlife to kind of, kind of re, restabilize in the lake as well. And then we come back with the data we have a year from now to say, okay, has this worked? If it, should we continue down this plan, or do we need to pivot and then have a workshop? Thank you, uh, Commissioner Caban. Now, was that a substitute motion you just uh, indicated? I, I don't, I mean, Commissioner Proctor, is that something that you feel comfortable with? We've got a motion it? on the floor in a second. I mean, we can do all of that. I'm just simply asking that after two years of a commitment to have a workshop, which we promised, and we've not done it. What I mean, it's not going to kill everything that you've said. That could be augmented. But uh, we, we were um, privy to a set of science data, uh, which this board has not seen. And I'm not saying that uh, game warden don't know what they're talking about. I'm not saying that staff does not know. But when you have a battery of, um, of uh, scholars, which uh, is the team uh, in Lake Munson, it would be compelling to me to hear directly and for us to hear as policymakers from that, um, those smart people. And not that we can't trust our staff, but information coming from people that smart don't have to be filtered through our staff. And we've made a commitment um, some time ago to talk. We ain't did it. And I'm, I think we should walk our talk. And that's why I'm asking for all of those things, but this includes a sit down to hear and we're not pointing fingers. This is, this is, this is, and this is a really novel stuff. But our staff gets their information from the game board. Uh, these people are uh, doing their thing, and the game board needs to hear. Maybe, who, who knows? It's not, uh, all, all of our efforts is to improve and make sure we can maximize uh, the potential of that lake to live again. Uh, so I don't think that we're putting too much time. I don't think we're over putting too much effort into the resource of Lake Munson. I, I just personally don't feel that. <clears throat> I respect the views of each commissioner if you think that we are putting that much time and we don't need to confront to deal with to hear from them. I respect what you all decide. It's my thought that we should. I'm sure, ma'am. Ma'am. Uh, let me hear Commissioner. O'Keefe, and then I'll come back to you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just have a question and then comments. Uh, with this motion accepting the report and inviting for a workshop, that means we still will continue with the current plan Absolutely. that's in the report. Okay. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, and the, and the reason I'm supporting this is um, because, I, actually, before I say that, the, the plan, after reviewing all the information, makes sense to me, um, and it looks like it makes sense when we get a report. And the reason I, I support this is that the idea of 
um, offering up a joint workshop with these other entities is we've heard from cons constituent groups that some of those entities disagree with what we're doing, and that conflicts with what I've been provided by staff, which, which it seems verified, verified to me. And so by inviting a workshop, if those entities object, they'll accept and they'll join and they'll tell us, and we can sort of, and if they don't really object, I doubt they'll join a workshop. Um, and so it's, um, we're willing to meet and we'd like to meet and get it going and we'll find out what others are interested in. But I support the plan as it is and I'm supporting this because it continues to allow the plan. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner O'Keefe. Uh, Commissioner Caban. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I think there's a disconnect. Um, may I address the county administrator? Yeah. Madam Chair. Mr. Minister, you know, we've met, I've met with staff, I've met with your office, I've met, you know, the information that your staff is gathering related to this item, could, could, could we talk about where some of that information is coming from? I, I think some of this information is coming from outside sources such as, such as FDEP and FWC. And I want to make sure, you know, listen, I'm not going to say no to having a workshop uh, if it's for the best for an asset in my district, but I don't want to happen is we start making it more difficult to move forward with the current action plan we have in place. So. Sure. Uh, yeah. And Madam Chair, Commissioner, happy to answer any questions you might have. In terms of we've always accurately reflected our uh, ongoing cooperation and coordination with our state partners. I mean, Anna works um, every day with, the, with these folks, just like we have those same technical staff people and people that are in positions of responsibility within all the state agencies. Uh, we accurately reflect all of that. It's not to say that people within state agencies, because as you know, thousands of people work for the state, don't have different opinions on these things. Uh, but we don't um, convene them all uh, for the purpose of building a road uh, with, on, on FDOT issues. Um, so you get accurate information on, on the positions that are the official positions of the agencies and people that are responsible within those agencies for making those determinations. Thank you, Mr. County Administrator. You have yes, further so, comments. So, so the current plan that we have, the action plan, part of the action plan came from working with FDEP and yes. FWC. Yes. Okay. So th that's what I'm getting. I, I feel I feel confident with the current direction that we're taking, and I personally want to come back a year from now with the information we have to see if the, the lake stabilizes, and then do a workshop. My fear is we have a workshop and we veer and we steer away from this current plan, and we, we never see that this plan that we have in place right now, the plan that the staff has in place, the, 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 the plan that in partnership with FWC and FDEP came with, we never see this come to fruition, and so we start running in circles here, and we never see what works or does not work. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Proctor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Commissioner Van, walk with me on this. Uh, we're not that local government in Tallahassee uh, that our arrogance uh, disallows us to hear from citizens who want to talk to their county board. Yeah. We're not that local government that we're so up that we can't hear from the people. Um, the chair lady and I, we attended uh, that meeting. Uh, what was the name of that church? Uh, yep, down there. And um, they had a packed out house. Uh, they had charts. Uh, media stuff, good as ours. Uh, these are really smart people. And I know that the governor of the state of Florida, uh, you, you know, he has people that he believes in, and you can't talk to the state of Florida. And when they say something, damn it, they put their foot down, and that's just all you're going to get. That's Florida. I don't want to be like them. Uh, I don't want to be like the other local government. We owe and we're going to be a government of the people for it, by it. They got something to say. And they have data that have been compiled. And I don't think the satin, uh, the, 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 whatever our governor's name, is the last word. In particular, on those things sensitive that people live out there for decades. Uh, on that lake, loving on that lake, grow up on that lake, and all of that. So... There is a posture of openness with which I believe uh, we can be. Uh, what, they want an hour or something like that? Uh, they got all these charts. They keep working hard. Let's hear them. Um, let's hear them. 
Uh, that, that's all I'm saying, Commissioner. You know, me and you were down like four flat tires. But uh, our effort to hear from uh, this group that put a lot of labor, and um, I don't think that the governor's folk is necessarily smarter than our folk. Uh, I know you can't tell them nothing and ain't going to listen to nothing, but we have an opportunity to welcome them here and to hear from our smart people, too, because we got smart people, and they, they got something to say, and I think we should hear them. That's all. Okay, thank you, uh, Commissioner Rock. Commissioner uh, Minor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, you know, um, I, I've seen our county staff working on Lake Munson for, for years, and um, for me it's been an educational process. I've learned the extent of the, the long history that the county has with, uh, with, uh, with Lake Munson. Um, I've also seen Commissioner Caban working very hard, um, reaching out to the folks that live along Lake Munson. And he organized a Lake Munson cleanup that I attended, and, and um, you know, our county staff was there. And, um, I've learned a lot over the years about Lake Munson, and and when Commissioner Caban, who represents that area, talks about the the plan and and says that he's confident in the plan at this stage, um, I, I'm willing to move forward with that. I, I'd like to, if, if we have a workshop, I'm there. Count me in. Uh, I love workshops, um, but but I think if Commissioner Caban, who represents that area, is confident in the way the direction at this time. Um, I'm willing to go with, with what his direction suggests what, and, and, and have that report come back to us in a year. At that point, we decide whether or not we want to have a workshop at that time or, or move forward with something else, a different approach. But um, I, give, I, I give a lot of weight to what Commissioner Caban is saying because I've seen him work so hard uh, on Lake Munson with the people that live there. Um, if it's the will of this body to move forward to the workshop, I'll be there. I'll be there with bells on. But I, I do think that Commissioner Caban is... Uh, got an approach here that I think is, is, is viable and is probably the right one. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Minor. Commissioner um, Maddox. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Mr. Administrator, Madam, Madam Chair, ma'am. Um, Please. So this all centers around a workshop that we had committed to do that we have not done. Is that correct? I know that there was a workshop discussed at Blueprint, but obviously those discussions this right. aren't, this commission is not bound by. So, yeah. so it, was a, it was a workshop that was discussed at Blueprint, not discussed in our meeting. That's my understanding. As I remember, the only meeting that we discussed here was a meeting by which we, we reached out to the city to have a workshop, correct? I think that's accurate, yeah. And the city did not respond. Um, I believe the... The meeting that you referred to at Blueprint was the meeting in which um, we were talking about the letter that the county had sent over uh, that the city had not responded to. At that meeting, the conversation was around, well, let's take a vote here, even if it's ceremonial, to see if there's any interest there. Um, I believe the vote was taken, and there was, I think, I think the, the motion may have failed in relation to doing a joint workshop. Not, that's not the same meeting we're talking about. That's the point I'm making. Um, either way, if we committed to a meeting, uh, a workshop, okay, we do a workshop, which is what was, was being said here. That that's what Commissioner said, Commissioner Proctor said. But if we have not committed to one, then are we talking about waiting to after we finish the process of what we're doing to see how that works out? At that point, we have a status report and check into 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 what happened or how the drawdown affected the lake. Correct. That's certainly something that the board could, could do at that point in time. Right. I don't, I see both sides of it. There's, to me, there's a lot of unclarity here about if we actually committed to a workshop. I do like what Commissioner Caban has said in that we have started a process. It sounds like there may be some disagreement on how we're going about that process, but we've started a process. Let's get through that process, see if it actually works, and if it doesn't, then we move in another direction. But, the, but everybody has the same goal here in attacking and addressing what's going on in Lake Munson. I, 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 I probably likely support where Commissioner uh, Caban is right now, um, but if, if I'm with Com Commissioner Minor, if you guys want to move in the direction of a workshop, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that too, but I'm also hearing you say, Mr. Administrator, that if we schedule a workshop, you're going to continue to move in the direction you're moving until you get a different direction from us, correct? That is correct, but Commissioner, I think a little piece of this that always, I, I think, 
is worth mentioning too. I'll remind the board just the extent to which, and when Commissioner Caban talks about, you know, momentum here and, and time and sticking to the plan and all of that sort of thing, I'll remind the board of just how comprehensive your efforts were prior to the adoption of this plan. You had us work with the working committee, many of the members who I think for months and months as we, as we put that plan together. So it's been very extensive. It's not like any of this has happened in a vacuum or anything else like that. You approved the plan. We're working the plan. We're very happy. Should the board wish to conduct workshops at any point in time? From our standpoint, if the board decided when we bring this back in a year, which we would do, that at that, that time you wanted to have a workshop to um, go over that data over that period of time, obviously we'd be happy to do that. We're happy to have a workshop whenever the board deems it's necessary. But again, this has been a very inclusive, very comprehensive process up to this point. I think, I think I remember I was there for it, but uh, it was very robust. And I do remember we had a few meetings with, with the community to kind of get input there. I'm, I'm partial to going ahead and moving forward with the process. It's not going to stop anyway. Uh, la last question, Madam Chair. When is the, when is the whole process completed? The drawdown. The drawdown process so that we can actually start to see results. <laughs> I'm just going to ask Anna to come up and okay, please. provide the specifics. We intend to open the gates and end the drawdown in May, beginning of May, beginning to mid-May, um, dependent on getting that last aerial topographic survey. Uh, we have our two-year en um, enhanced monitoring water quality testing that also starts in May, so that'll go May 2024 through May 2026. And we'll be getting status up once you open those gates. We'll be getting the status updates. Um, let's say every now and then to see how things are going with with the lake. Yes, in the item we were recommending bringing that back upon completion of that. But basically, what uh, uh, Commissioner Caban said is that, and it, and again, if that reflects the the will of the board, and well, again, I, and I mentioned to Commissioner Caban earlier today that we'd be happy to bring that back within one year, yeah. and uh, and bring it back as as often as the board would like it uh, to be brought back. But again, there's, there, there does need to be time between these reports so that we can do all the work that's involved here. I would be, I would be in, in favor of us waiting a little bit before we, before we did that and conducted the workshop. Thank you, Ms. You would be in favor of? Of us waiting uh, a bit a to see year. What, what kind of results we get. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, let me ask Anna. Um, at the end of the drawdown, there's going to be a period of two years of testing. That, that's correct. That's correct. We'll have monthly testing for a period of two years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Monthly for a period of two years. And then after that, just depend on the results of the test. Yeah, after the two-year period is over, we'll go back to the normal quarterly water quality sampling that we currently take. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, after C... <coughs> I don't see having a workshop as stopping the process or changing the direction that the board has given. I see it more, Mr. County Administrator, it's informational, perhaps, to, to bring maybe the citizens, the residents in that area up, up to date. I appreciate this report that we have here, and I take it once the drawdown ends in May, somewhere close to that, we'll receive uh, another, another report. Okay. I don't see having a workshop as impeding the process uh, at all. I think we've got some concerned uh, citizens uh, in that area. And, of course, we are concerned. I understand this late months and has, has been an issue for years and years, and I see all the millions of dollars that have, have been directed toward the, toward the cleanup. Um, everybody recognizes that it's, uh, it's a concern. But having said that, I, I, don't, I don't have a major problem with the process continuing but still bringing together in the form of a workshop uh, our SACS committee, our 
county scientists, other scientists, uh, FWC, and then we we have that that forum. We have have a forum in the guise of a workshop to just make sure everybody knows where we are, and everybody recognizes uh, the the periodic reports that have been given, uh, projection of when more reports will be given, and of course we have to wait and see the results of the the tests after the drawdown, but. Citizen involvement, um, citizens being able to to hear our experts on on where we are, uh, I, I just I don't see that as a, a major as a major problem. And I think if we specify as a board uh, that after the drawdown, we ask staff to to organize a workshop, it could be later on this year or within the next three months, the next four months, um, and specifically indicate who we'd like to be at the workshop to give uh, their input. I think it would just be informational for everybody. Uh, Commission, so that's my opinion, Commissioner Caban. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, two points I, I, I would like to make. Um, right here in front of me is a, this is a recommendation from Sean McGlenn, who is a scientist who spent a majority of his career, I believe, working on areas such as Lake Munson. Um, last spring, when we were constructing this action plan, I met frequently with folks from the community in, that neighbor, in those neighborhoods with outside, out, outside scientist councils. I met with staff, um, worked very closely in putting together this action plan uh, that we are currently in the process of executing. Um, the second point I would like to make that I think is very important, important to consider, let's say we were to do a workshop this summer or this fall or even early next spring the information that's provided to us is not accurate information because it takes 12 to 18 months for the lake to stabilize post drawdown. So the information that we would be using to construct a different path is not accurate information because the lake, the lake needs time. Every, every staff member that we've met with, every scientist I've met with, they've all said after the drawdown, the lake needs time. It takes 12 to 18 months for, to, to settle. And so the information that, that we'd be using would not be the best current information. I think it's best for the lake that we finish the current action plan and that we circle back after 12 months from now when we have updated information that is the most accurate point in that time before we schedule a workshop. Um, so thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Caban. Um, Commissioner Proctor. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> Commissioner Maddox made a profound statement <clears throat> in capturing uh, the narrative of the evolution of this issue. And the key, one of the key sentences that, uh, that, that was striking, it was just like, boom, uh, that Commissioner Maddox said was that uh, the county reached out to the city, the city's government, and we never heard back. Never heard back. Uh, that was like a missile. Uh, got a headache. And if the county's government can't hear back from the city, uh, how would a mere citizens group be able to hear back? And I appreciate you lifting that up, Commissioner Maddox, uh, accurately. And this is the nature of tone deafness of citizens feeling across our community. Um, we're certainly not uh, trying to unravel a uh, plan, the work. That's not the quest. Uh, the desire is simply to hear. Uh, when I uh, put myself on the, on the, on the, on the platform here, uh, had uh, 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 clots uh, last December in the lung, Commissioner, you're the first person to come and see me. I appreciate that. And I didn't die, uh, could have. Um, but 
I wouldn't because I wanted to be here today for this meeting. And I wanted to be here to hear from citizens who are asking to meet with me alive. It could have been a few people gathered to a graveside, but they, they wanted to talk to us alive. And um, I'm honored myself that they do, that they would, that they would even ask. They had this meeting and invited all of us to come to them. And for whatever reason, uh, our chair lady came to them as they tried to demonstrate and put forth. And uh, I went. I believe you came early. And, uh, and they're trying with all their might. Can we get your attention? We want to say something. I like that. I'm not trying to change what you did, but I am not wanting us to regulate uh, a government that's tone deaf. I don't want to do that. And I think that we can chew bubble gum and walk, do the study, and hear from the people as they're asking. At this time, they're not trying to interrupt. Uh, they're wanting to augment, uh, perhaps, perchance, uh, a methodology that our people haven't thought about. I don't know. But um, we've enough time on this right here. That's how I feel, and I hope that our our, our motions are, I think, blended. And um, and if it's not your all's desire, because I love you enough to um, relinquish and, you know, if you love something, open your hand and let it go, let it free. Uh, if it likes you, it'll come back. Uh, but I'm grateful that you keep coming back. And um, I wanted to open the doors for all of our colleagues to hear from a part of the world that oftentimes feel uh, tone deafness from our government. So thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioners, for considering my ask. Thank, thank you, uh, Commissioner Proctor. I think we've all expressed our opinion. We have. I have a substitute motion. Oh, do you? Yes, ma'am. Are you making a substitute motion? OK, go ahead, Commissioner Cobain. Yes, ma'am. So, Commissioners, if you could walk me on this, I think what I'm going to do is um, kind of land this plan in a way where I think everyone's happy. I'm going to make a substitute motion to accept the status report and have a, a when the, stat, the, the next status report come back to us in 12 months. And at that time, if the daily maximum daily loads, if, if the nutrient levels are high in the lake, then we will commit to a workshop at that time in that next meeting. Okay, before we get a second, I want some specification. After, after a year, depending on you saying the high and lows, and I'm not sure, if, is that enough direction for you, yes. Mr. County Administrator? Okay, all right. Thank you. Is there a second? Any discussion? Discussion, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, this is the first time in the history of my hearing that we've... Uh, we have set a contingency clause as a basis to have a uh, workshop. Uh, a quantitative uh, measure should not be a standard by which we afford people access to talk to a county's government. Um, that we will talk with you, we will hear from you if there is a maximum daily load at a certain quantifiable rate. Otherwise, we won't hear from you. I refuse to support that, and we should not condition the quality of people's voices on a daily load of something out at Lake Munson. The people are bigger. They're greater. They're more important than a daily load in, in, in equating uh, something that occurs in nature as a qualifier for them to talk to the Leon County Board of County Commissioner. We're bigger than that. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Proctor. Commissioner uh, Maddox. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, again, it, it comes down to a workshop timing-wise when we're going to do it. And what, but I, the, the question I had was, if we have the workshop now, um, which, Madam Chair, you had specified that the process will continue to go, I would imagine there that it's not just information. There's a piece to this that the citizens are disputing that's different than what staff is saying, and there's some things that you would like to see changed. Access, access to the to government and the electeds. Anytime 
any citizens wanting to meet with staff on any issue, they have the numbers, the emails, and the opportunity to do so. So I don't think access is necessarily an issue here. Um, and, and there needed to be a conversation. The conversation, again, can happen during those same meetings. When it comes down to it for me, it's more of there's some things that just two sides don't agree on. There's an approach that, 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 that the county's taken. There's an approach that the citizens believe is the right way to go about it. And we've been down this road ever since we started the conversation about Lake Monson. And the difference of philosophy, philosophy between the citizens and what we're doing as a government. And we have time and time again asked government to work with the citizens, workshop after workshop, meeting after meeting, in order for us to even get to the point, Madam Chair, where we were able to agree on something to move forward with with the drawdown. That was a collaborative effort between meetings between the, the government, the young county government, as specified by us up here, and the citizens group. And we, and we worked and came together and we came up with something that we can move forward on. Now, we're at a point that we're moving forward on it. Now we're talking about having another workshop, and again, if, there's, if there was absolutely nothing wrong with the process, there would be questions and there would be answers. And there would probably be um, citizens coming up saying that they agree with what staff is doing, the staff is doing a good job. But there's differences there. So I don't want to be, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to paint this picture like, well, we're just going to have a workshop to, you know, exchange information and talk this thing over. No. The, the, the expectation at this workshop is either we as a commission is going to back what staff is doing or we're going to ask staff to move in a different direction. I believe what Commissioner Caban has said is that he wants to move forward with what staff is doing to get in the, to, so we can go, get to a point so we get enough evidence whether or not it's going to work. So, again, I could go with, with waiting a year and... and <clears throat> I don't think it's, it's, it's conditional in that the nutrient load, depending on where it is, whether or not we have a workshop. I mean, if staff came back, I don't even think you had to make that as a part of the, of the, of the motion. If the status report comes back at that time and it says, you know, we have a problem and we need to do something about it, staff is going to say that and we're going to actually have a workshop. Or I wouldn't even venture to say, uh, Mr. Administrator, is if before then you see levels rising, uh, in between now and that year, you will bring something back for our consideration as to how to deal with the with the with the nutrient levels rising. Correct? I mean, I'm, I don't think it's outside of what staff would do. Please. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair, Commissioner. Yeah, Commissioner, I don't I don't think any commissioner up here would say they've suffered from a lack of information on Lake Munson. Uh, and so, again. We can bring this back to you in, in a year, and at that time, the board can give us the direction to have a workshop, you know, with or without the threshold that, that, that Commissioner Caban talked about. And we're very happy either way. So again, we're, we're, we're happy to accept whatever the direction uh, that the board might be. I think, Commissioner Maddox, I think you've, you've uh, kind of summed up the, the dynamics very well in terms of the lay of the land. Madam Chair, finally, I, I'm just... I'm just at a point I think this, this conversation is drug out, drug out a little bit over the fact of either we're going to let staff continue to move in this direction and we're going to have a workshop in a year to see what that looks like because there is there's room for citizen input, whether it be through email, coming to speak at our meetings, or before or after. There, there's, there's opportunity there, and there's opportunity also for, for citizens to get information. So either we're going to let staff finish out this process or, very bluntly, if there's something that we want changed that came from the citizens, uh, the citizens group, if there's a suggestion that they made that we won't change, then we can just ask, ask staff to change it. Because I don't, I don't think at the workshop you're going to get a different, a different you know, environment, a different conversation between staff and the citizens group. So I'm in favor, again, of at least finishing out this process and then having, and then having a, a status report and allowing staff the, 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 the room there that if we see those levels start to rise, that they would respond appropriately by getting us all together and us having a conversation. Thank you. 
Thank you, uh, Commissioner Maddox. <clears throat> Commissioner Miner. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I think Commissioner Maddox is 100% uh, spot on. I, I agree with everything that he said. Um, you know, and Commissioner Proctor, I respect what you're saying, but I disagree with it strongly. Having a workshop is not the only way for the public to talk with us. Um, I've spoken with Max. I've spoken with people that um, that live along Lake Munson. Munson. Um, we've had long conversations, and, but uh, I've actually helped them try to identify the main bones of contention so that we can help with, work with staff to try to resolve those bones of contention. Um, so, uh, you know, we have agreed to a process. Uh, that process is is still in play. Um, our, our our county commissioner that represents that area, I've seen him work hard on this. Um, as Commissioner Maddox says, I think a workshop is basically done for two things: to hear the status of what our what the county's doing, but then possibly decide if we want to change midstream. I don't think we're at that point yet. Uh, so when Commissioner Gaban talks about having you know us take a look at the status report a year from now. Uh, I think the county staff can make the decision on whether or not, you know, from their from their eyes, whether or not we should have a workshop. We can look at that staff report in a year and decide if we want one on our own. So I'm con I'm going to support the motion, the substitute motion on the table. Um, uh, if in turn, in the end, this this body wants to do a workshop, I'm happy to be there and participate. But we have come up with a plan after many years, uh, and before this plan, millions of dollars spent on Lake Munson before. Uh, to get it to this point, let's hear. Let's let's see it play out. Let's take a look at where we are in a year, and then go from there. Thank, thank you, Madam you. Chair. Thank you, uh, thank you, Commissioner Commissioner Miner. Um, okay, Commissioner. Uh, Madam Chair, this is just a, to ask of of staff, Vince, if I might. Um, you want Anna to come back? I think so, and I, I don't want to mix apples and oranges. So, Commissioner Maddox, please chief, please walk with me. Commissioner Maddox, um, the third part of uh, those holding ponds, uh, beginning at Cascades, going down on FAMU Way in that elbow, coming up to uh, Anita Davis Lake, and then after there, it's supposed to be, and I'm, I'm in blue uh, blueprint mode right now, that's why I'm asking you to walk with Nick. Um, what is the status and what is the relationship between that um, build out of that uh, new pond uh, to the plan that is underway? Or is there any correlation? And I know that I might be dipping into uh, the blueprint uh, notion of those chain of holding ponds <coughs> that we were establishing. It's my understanding that all of the blueprint stormwater facilities that were in design have been constructed and that the only thing outstanding is the segment for the Capitol Cascades Trail. So did we cancel or walk away from the one that was supposed to be the southernmost uh, developed lake? Because we had it to go uh, teed up to be the first. And uh, when all of those um, cars were underwater uh, at Leon High School, at the Leon High School, then we altered the plan uh, in midstream, and we uh, did Boulevard, uh, Franklin Boulevard, got covered up, got deepened, and to, to relieve Leon. Uh, and we've never gone back to the original thought of starting the southerly boundary, coming back and coming back and working from Capitol Circle back into the city. Have we abandoned it? I mean, can someone be honest about, have we abandoned that Mr. commitment? Yeah, sure. No. No, in fact, we continue to articulate the $300 million that have been spent uh, in this chain of lakes over the past 20 years. Um, and we continue to bring items to the board articulating everything that's happened, including the ongoing work that's occurring there. So, uh, But with respect to, to Blueprint, I see Autumn made her way Towards it, Autumn. If, is there any gap that you can help fill in with respect to Blueprint? Uh, the Cascades Segment Four project is um, the last piece of the Cascades Trail um, to be completed. But major components of that project have actually already been completed. Like the City of Tallahassee did um, several stormwater ponds that were part of that plan that are just on the west side of the Bond neighborhood. 
Um, and the Cascades 4 project has a $20 million commitment attached to it. It's moving forward. Um, it's in design now, and we expect to break ground in 2025. Very good. I'm, I'm, I'm richly excited, and for some reason, I'm not a scientist, but somehow uh, that uh, pawn was to play a role and have impact on the quality of water that was moving into Lake Munson, and that it would be a major uh, kidney to filter and, uh, and change the quality of uh, Munson. And I just want to make sure uh, that the game is still honest with respect to uh, the dollars set aside to be invested and that it was to have an impact on the quality of Lake Munson. And, and, and as long as we're committed to trying that, that piece of science, biology, whatever it is, uh, it, it will improve. But uh, I don't want us to walk away from that because without doing that, we're not maximizing the clean potential of waters going into Lake Munson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, you look very nice. Uh, just a lovely, uh, beautiful, I wish beautiful. You set the raise the bar for all of us tonight. And um, thank you, Commissioner Sight for sore eyes. Thank, thank you. you, Commissioner Proctor. Okay. One last comment. I'll make a comment and then we're gonna go to vote. All I'm gonna do is um, I'm going to edit my substitute motion to remove the latter part of it to just accept the status report and schedule the next status report twelve months from now. Schedule the, schedule the next status report 12 months from now. After the drawdown. Yes. That is actually sooner than we proposed bringing it back. Okay. Is there a second? Thank you. Okay. I think we've uh, we've done away with the first substitute motion. Now we've got it. Amid this substitute motion. Uh, let, let me just say this. I certainly give deference to the commissioner whose um, Lake Munson sits in his, in his district. And, uh, and, and I think that's the right thing to do, give deference to that district commissioner. But I also have my own concerns about citizens uh, wanting to communicate with the commission wanting to get clarification. Uh, and with all due respect to uh, Commissioner Maddox, uh, I think his projections about a potential workshop is, is hypothetical. We, we, we don't know um, the outcome of a potential workshop. In my opinion, it gives staff and our county administrator the opportunity to just set forth what we're doing, the scientific nature of what we're doing, what, what has taken place, and the status of, of where we are. True, we have our reports uh, as commissioners. Um, all citizens don't have access to the, to, to the various reports that are submitted by staff. Uh, I think on that side of town, we have some citizens that don't even have have internet service. We don't mail out paper, paper copies. So I, I just see it as input from citizens, as I said before, uh, in, informational. Um, I, I just have a problem with saying in a year we'll have a workshop and we'll provide more information to the citizens, especially those that live around uh, that area. Not to say, uh, Mr. County Administrator, I believe staff has done a great job. They followed the plan. We, we've got our plan. This would not, hold, holding a workshop later this year would not impede in any way the plan that this board has, has adopted the last couple of years, plan of correction for, for the lake. Uh, so having said that, what I will do is ask all those in favor of Commissioner Caban's substitute motion uh, to indicate by a vote of aye. 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 
And I'm not sure if I need a roll call. Okay, let me see by the show of raise of hands. Okay. So we've got five, and all those not in favor, uh, show your hand, but, but nay. So five in favor, two against. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you so much. Mr. County Administrator. Thank you, Madam Chair. That concludes your consent agenda. We're on to general business, item number 14. Uh, commissioners, item number 14 seeks your consideration to dedicate courtroom 3A in honor of Judge James C. Hankinson uh, with the placement of an honorary plaque at the entrance of the courtroom. This follows your direction uh, uh, to staff to bring that back. This is all consistent with your policy, and we're happy to accept uh, board direction on this item. Thank you, Mr. County Administrator. I'd like to entertain a motion to accept the report. Um, so moved. Thank you, Commissioner Maddox, uh, Commissioner Ryder. Is there any discussion? I think it would be option one. Oh, okay. be option, okay. I'm looking at attachments one. I'm sorry. Option, <laughs> uh, is the motion to accept option one? Yes, ma'am. Is there a second? Yes. Okay. Any discussion? Uh, I just want to thank you, Mr. County Administrator, and your staff for looking uh, into this request from Judge Almond, who is our chief judge. Uh, many of us, and I'm sure our attorney, um, Chastity, had many hearings before Judge, judge Hankinson in that very courtroom. And I think it's, it will be an honor uh, for his family to accept uh, the recommendation of the board. So all those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? And I vote aye. And Commissioner O'Keefe is out of chambers. Thank you, Mr. County Administrator. Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioners, item number 15 seeks the board's acceptance of approximately $2.3 million in opioid, in opioid settlement funds from the state and the authorization to execute agreements uh, with the Northwest Florida Health Network to receive the funds and Disc Village to provide treatment services for opioid and, and substance abuse as, as outlined in the item before you. As detailed in the item, commissioners, we were notified at the end of last year that the county would receive an additional uh, $11.6 million in opioid settlement funds from the state over the next 18 years. This is the first installment of that. Uh, as I've uh, mentioned to many, many of the commissioners in our briefings, it's pretty prescriptive in terms of uh, how we spend these dollars, and so we would uh, anticipate bringing you all uh, a recommendation uh, with future installments over the next uh, 18 years. But this is the first installment. Uh, the recommended options are before you, and we are happy to answer any questions you might have. We have no speakers on this item. Thank you, Mr. Uh, County Administrator. Uh, commissioners, I'd like to, to entertain a motion to accept options one, two, and three as recommended by staff. So Commissioner moved. Welch. So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner O'Keefe. Is there any discussion? Discussion, Madam Chair. Uh, Commissioner Proctor. Uh, Madam Attorney, uh, a few years ago, uh, uh, Attorney Daryl Parks uh, had been a part and aligned uh, as a part of the um, legal team to uh, administer the disbursement of uh, these funds. Uh, is he still a part of uh, the legal uh, network that's in dealing with the uh, opioid uh, settlement? Commissioner Darrell, I mean, Commissioner, Attorney Darrell Parks. May I? Yes, you may. Thank you. Um, we have not communicated with Mr. Parks. We receive um, updates periodically from our main outside counsel. It's my understanding that. Um, Attorney Parks basically had partnered with uh, the law firm that was handling a lot of the outside counsel matters for the local governments. So I'm honestly not sure. They are not paid directly from us out of any settlement proceeds. They're paid out of, because it's basically, it's not characterized as a class action, but this is a class action. And when we signed um, the MOU with the state of Florida, it determined um, how attorney fees would be paid out of the settlement proceeds that we receive. So we do not make any direct payments to our outside counsel for their services. 
Okay, I uh, was very much, uh, I know the state of Florida is disinterested in diversity, uh, but the county of Leon is. Uh, my hope is that, uh, that Attorney Parks uh, was still a part of the, this litigation and on the legal team. Uh, it was meaningful. I didn't see any uh, supporting uh, documents, so I guess we didn't get anything from the legal side of it, but um, this is the service side uh, in the sense of delivering of care. So I appreciate your attention. Thank you. All right. Uh, I've got the gavel uh, temporarily. Are there any other questions? Yes, sir. Commissioner O'Keefe. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Actually, uh, I just want to record my vote in support of number 14. Prime. All right. So noted. Um, all right. No, if there's no more questions, uh, then um, we will. We have a motion for staff recommendation seconded, made by myself, and seconded by Commissioner O'Keefe. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. I am also in the affirmative, Madam Attorney. Oh, you good? Yeah. Okay. All right, uh, Mr. County Administrator, next item. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this item uh, before you, Commissioner, seeks the acquisition of a parcel needed for the Centerville Road uh, turn lane at Harper's Ferry Drive. The item requests the board's approval of a counter offer of $200,000, inclusive of all costs and fees uh, that was received from Ox Bottom Mortgage Holdings, the property owner. Uh, the purpose of this item is to acquire 0.84 acres uh, that is needed uh, for the county to construct a uh, Centerville Turn Lane, uh, again, at Harper's Ferry Drive. Uh, before you, Commissioners, we have uh, all of you the information with respect um, to how this uh, process was carried out, consistent with our uh, relevant policies and, and appraisals, uh, et cetera. Again, this is a, uh, a counter offer, and, and we are recommending uh, option one, and we'll be happy to answer any questions on any of the details, and we have no speakers on this item. Uh, all right. Is there a motion? We so like move, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I noticed your district and you wanted to make that motion, but yes, in reference sir. to your chairmanship, uh, I'll do it for you. <laughs> I have you. always loved the name Hopper's Ferry, and that every time I pass that road, I, I kind of almost tremble Hopper's Ferry. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't think there's an armory at this Hopper's Ferry. Well, uh, I, I often think about it. Sorry. Madam Attorney. Point of order, until the chair passes the gavel, until you pass the gavel back, you can't make a motion. You're the city Yeah, chair. I didn't make a motion. Uh, Commissioner Proctor made Perfect. a motion. Thank you. Uh, and I believe Commissioner Minor seconded it. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I will pass the gavel back to Madam Chair now because I would like to speak on this item. <laughs> Um, Madam Chair, I want to withdraw the motion and defer to the district commissioner to make this motion up at Hop Hopper's Ferry. I'll withdraw my second. Madam Chair, ma'am. Please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Proctor and Commissioner Minor. This, is, uh, this has been a long time coming for the folks in Centerville Trace. Uh, if you're familiar with the northbound journey up Centerville Road, it can be a little bit tedious at rush hour, and this will provide a northbound turn lane into that neighborhood. I want to thank staff for working on this for a long time, but certainly since I've been elected, it's been a, it's been a priority, and so three plus years, and uh, I'm, it's, it's, it's budgeted, it's the planning is done, we're ready to rock and roll, so we ought to be able to finish this project really quickly. And so uh, with that being said, I'd like to make the motion for staff recommendation. Second. Thank you. Commissioner Welch and Commissioner Caban, are there any comments or discussions from uh, from commissioners? Commissioner Caban? Oh, did you have no? Mm -mm. No, um, Commissioner Minor seconded the motion for a point of clarification. Okay, I'm sorry. Commissioner Minor seconded the motion. Uh, and I certainly um, support the motion, uh, Commissioner Welch. I think we, we all know that um, being engaged in eminent domain proceedings can be long drawn out. Um, and I think the kind of offer that was made, um, we would probably absorb that amount and more if we went into, went into litigation. So I think the interest of, of time and the interest of improving that particular area, I certainly support uh, staff recommendation and the motion as well. So all those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 
Any opposition? Uh, hearing none, the motion carries. Mr. County Administrator. Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioners, the item before you, item number 17, seeks the full board's consideration for the appointment of citizens to the MWSBE committee, as well as the uh, Sports Council. Uh, there are two applicants seeking at-large seats on the MWSBE committee, and with respect to the Sports Council, uh, two, there are two seats. Um, uh, however, the two incumbent uh, um, uh, members that are, that are currently in, in place are seeking a reappointment. Uh, but in addition to that, the board has uh, eight additional applicants uh, uh, for your consideration. And uh, uh, options one and two uh, are before you, and we're seeking your direction on those. Uh, we have one speaker on this item, Stanley Sims. Thank you, Mr. Sims. Good afternoon again. My name is Stanley Sims. I'm at 1320 Avondale Way. And my, my comments this afternoon is, is more directly toward the Affordable Housing Advisory Committee. Um, we are very blessed in this county to have the best worldwide county administrator. Amen. The Lord is good to us. That's him right there. His name is Vince. I like embarrassing him. So my qualm is not with the process, but I would like for us to broaden our scope. In light of current rent and unaffordable housing availability in our county, I think it would be very cognizant of us to have a representative on this board who have experienced eviction or is currently living in an affordable housing situation, whether that be HUD or rental or something, that that should be a standing you know, position on that board. You have a, and, and let me say, I'm not coming from this as uh, accusatory or something wrong. No, I just think that in lieu of what's going on in our community now, to give more substance to this board, we could find an applicant who is currently who is living under, in, in a affordable housing situation or a HUD situation. And it would just bring so much credibility to this advisory board. Thank you so much. Um, these are the kind of ideas that comes from a worldwide known county administrator. It is just so good to be up under his leadership, ma'am. And when you have that kind of leadership in your county, you don't need all of your three minutes. Thank you. Thank you. That's Thank you, Mr. Cousin. Sims. Vince is your cousin? That's my cousin. Oh, that's a good one. That's your cousin? <laughs> we, we certainly agree with your sentiment. we got the greatest county administrator on planet Earth. Amen. Boom. And he's got a certificate to show that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anything further, Mr. County Administrator? Okay. Uh, commissioners, we have, uh, number one, we'll deal with the appointments to minority women in small business uh, citizens advisory committee, and we have two applicants. So I'll entertain a motion, Commissioner Proctor. Madam Chair, I uh, want to make a comment. Uh, who, who are the names here? Danielle Andrews and Anthony Anderson. Now, is one of these a incumbent? Is there an incumbent? No, the individual in that position resigned. They didn't seek reappointment, I believe. Okay. I don't know what it is, but um, uh, we used to get lobby for these positions. And I don't know, commissioners, if you're getting lobby, but there's just a lot of silence around these appointments. And I don't know if these... Um, Commissioner Turnbull, how you doing? I, I just recognize you there, looking good. Uh, Commissioner Marjorie Turnbull is with us today, and glad to see you. Yeah, I was going to acknowledge her, Commissioner. Okay. <laughs> I, I was startled, you know. Uh, it's good to see her. Um, if we're not, people not panting uh, to serve, and that's a sign. We only have two applicants for 
for this particular important role. And does that mean that these 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 uh, committees done played out? They don't get nothing done. They don't. Uh, it just doesn't create a buzz. And I'm pondering why don't we have but two two um, applicants for the minority women and small business enterprise citizen advisory committee. Uh, no insult to the two people who have applied. But I'm concerned with how do we expose the community uh, to these options. And we, once upon a time, we would hear from people lobbying to get so and so on to serve. They were anxious to do it. Uh, this is painful to me uh, that this particular committee has such low interest from citizens. Uh, it should be more names, I would think. And I'm not sure what it's reflective of. Maybe, maybe the spirit of the administration uh, that's in Tallahassee that gets rid of DEI, uh, eclipse African American history, uh, uh, smothers diversity. Um, people just don't want to serve. But when the capital county of Florida has but two applicants to serve on the Minority Women and Small Business Enterprise Advisory Committee, uh, something is wrong. And I take these low numbers to be uh, the spirit of the times, uh, the cloud against women, uh, the abortion issue, the fight, uh, the cloud against minorities. Uh, something is wrong. Mm -hmm. And um, no, no disrespect to the two applicants, but Two people applying for these special roles uh, is almost like the seat of the governor of the state of Florida. Nobody signs up to run because they ain't interested. Um, this is similar to me. So those are comments I wanted to make, just a recognition that something is wrong. Thank you, Commissioner Proxer. I'll entertain a motion, Commissioner. We have two applicants, one vacant position, Ms. Uh, Commissioner Maddox. Madam Chair, I make a motion for Danielle Andrews for the MWBE committee. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Oh, Commissioner Cabanian, thank you so much. Is there any discussion? Madam Chair, if you, if you would allow me, I'm also on the uh, Sports Council, and I could just reappoint. Well, well, let me just deal. I'll just let this one yes, pass, and then we'll deal with Sports Council separate. Uh, Commissioner O'Keefe. Thank you. My, my comment is actually a question about what Mr. Sims brought up. Madam Chair, would you like me to wait until we've dealt with these two appointments or go ahead and ask it now? I think probably we'll wait because we don't really discuss the comments from citizens at that time. Am I correct? We can wait till commission, commission comments. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All those in favor of Ms. Danielle Andrews' appointment, um, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Maddox, I'll go back to you. Madam Chair, I make a motion to reappoint uh, Judy Alexander and Jason Pappas to the TS, uh, TSC board. Thank you. It's been moved by Commissioner Maddox and second by Commissioner a caban for the two individuals. Is there any discussion? What Madam, the Madam Clerk, did you understand the names? Okay, repeat the names again, Commissioner Maddox. It's real point, J Jason Pappas and uh, Judy Alexander. And they have served before and they are both seeking reappointment. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of their reappointment, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. And I vote aye. Any opposition? Hearing none. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Mr. County Administrator, I believe that concludes. Well, I'll turn it over back to you. <laughs> Chair, that concludes your general business um, agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. County Administrator. At this point, what we will do is go to... Uh, Comments from the commission. 
and the board uh, start with our county attorney. Have any? Thank you, Madam Chair. I have nothing for thank the board. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. County Administrator. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I have nothing here. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Welch. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like uh, to, well, first of all, thank you for your uh, expedition meeting today. I'm afraid that our dinner won't be here for a little bit longer, so I uh, might have to wait uh, a little tick. Um, I'd like to ask for a proclamation for uh, retiring Assistant Sheriff Steve Harrelson uh, after 35 years of service with our Leon County Sheriff's Office. Is that your motion? Yes, ma'am. Okay, motion by Commissioner Welch, second by Commissioner Minor. All those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? None. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, may I? Please. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, also like to commend our staff on uh, the great work they did preparing our float for springtime Tallahassee. I know that we all had a great time and enjoyed that. And uh, I want to you know, let them know I appreciate their work on, on the float and putting everything together and having T-shirts and candy and, and Matt and, and uh, Kiana and all that staff and our public works guys. They do such a great job. Um, lastly, I would like to ask for your indulgence. Um, in requesting staff bring back an item to deal with the golf cart ordinance, um, particularly as it relates to Westminster Oaks and the folks along Dempsey Mayo. I believe there's some, some statutory language at the state level that may allow us to sort of carve out an ordinance that, that, that limits its scope just to our retirement communities in the, in the county in terms of golf cart usage. But uh, I'd like to ask staff to take a look at that ordinance again and see if they can come back with a, an item that allows us to, to better facilitate um, some motion across Dempsey Mayo because, you know, they've got properties on both sides of the road um, and there are some insurance considerations and things like that with maintenance okay. staff and residents. Is there a second? Awesome. Commissioner Caban, hello. Is, is it okay to say you do it? Okay. Uh, all those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. All those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Any opposition? I'm sorry, Commissioner uh, Maddox. I was going to I was going to ask for an amendment to the motion. That's fine. You were going to amend the motion. I was going to ask for an amendment to the motion. Oh. Okay, I think the motion passed. Yes, ma'am. If we get to you, if you want to do another motion, you can. Okay, are you done, Commissioner? Uh, yes, ma'am. I'm done. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you, so thank you so much, Commissioner uh, Proctor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Teresa Broxton is in the house today, and. Um, Commissioners, I just wanted to, you can stand up, Teresa. Uh, the outstanding uh, work that Teresa is doing and giving leadership to the uh, uh, PSCC, the Public Safety Coordinating Council. <clears throat> and I know that, uh, Teresa, um, I'm a hard drink of water to swallow as a chairperson there. But um, God bless you for your long suffering and patience with me. And you're doing a great job. And uh, the last... Uh, packet of information that you uh, you all presented uh, it was it was just uh, outstanding. It's getting gooder and gooder, and I want to thank you publicly for all that you do, uh, staffing and, and coordinating all of those uh, people that sit around this table. So thank you so kindly. Secondly, uh, Madam Chair and Commissioners, I wanted to cite the outstanding work of uh, Ms. Carrie Post, uh, the leadership. We're in the month of March uh, as we're uh, launching into the celebration of our 200th uh, bicentennial. Uh, Ms. Post has uh, been exquisitely uh, wonderful and outstanding. And I, I think that the, uh, the gospel concert, uh, is Ms. Post back there? Is she in here? Ms. Post, you in the house? Oh. Good, 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 good. She's right. hidden. Didn't know. You, you're a hidden figure. Um, we wanted you to know that you're doing a beautiful job. Uh, all parts of um, our bicentennial are moving. Uh, you can see the energy integration of springtime Tallahassee. Uh, you all have been everywhere. And um, I just want you to know that I'm, I'm, I'm taking notes. As a member uh, representing our board on the Tourist Development Council, um, I hold a very special seat uh, representing our board. And uh, Ms. Post, her energy, her love, 
uh, is infectious, and people love to uh, work with her. Uh, the gospel concert, it rained, oh God. And that, that's why I didn't come out there that, that Friday night, because, you know, I don't, me and Luther Vandross, we don't like to sing in the rain. We, don't, we never did like to get out in the cold. But um, it dried. It stopped raining about 6.30. And my understanding is that they went through and dried up all the seats. and People came out, and um, Yolanda Adams, who, um, you know, my duet partner, uh, Yolanda, um, I sing with her when she's in my car CD. She's, I, I sing with her. She doesn't know I sing, but that's my duet partner. Uh, fantastic. So that gospel thing, the uh, kickoff on that Thursday night, was special. Great job. So God be the glory uh, for the leadership inspired through uh, Mrs. Post. Um, commissioners, I was, um, it was lifted up in a published newspaper account that um, I took that um, commissioners had disrespected the chair at the, uh, one of the previous IA meeting. And um, I want to say to the public, uh, uh, to uh, Mr. Vaughn Wilson, who wrote the letter, <clears throat> and more especially to you, Madam Chair, uh, when I read uh, Vaughn's letter, uh, he's not a flake of a person. Uh, he's a very substantive guy, and I know he gave much and deep thought to uh, those words. And I want you to know that uh, sometimes uh, uh, in the efforts to, but I've never, ever wanted any way for you to think that I would disrespect you. So I've written you today an apology, which I've shared with this board, city's commissioners, Everybody else who want to know it sent the copy to um, um, Capital Outlook. And I want you to know that you are indeed an icon, uh, your historic figure. Uh, your leadership of this day is, uh, is historic. Uh, your leadership at Blueprint is historic. And we've never had a person like you to be the chairperson of Blueprint. So there's nothing that I would do, I want to disrespect you because don't tell nobody I said it, but I love you a right. whole lot. And have loved you before I was a commissioner, before you was a commissioner, and ain't none of these titles gonna come between how I feel about you like that. So forgive me, I'm sorry. And um, I love you very much, um, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Brock. Yes, ma'am. I saw something about the summer youth uh, in the newspaper today, and uh, please know, staff, that I'm excited uh, to see the energy uh, uh, swirling as we're getting uh, our young people excited about the summer youth program. I hope that, and I don't know, uh, Mr. Administrator, if we are going to have interns ourselves or students working individually. I know during COVID, we um, we, um, we didn't go there, but are we back at that point that we are uh, entertaining student interns? Those positions are part of the summer youth program, so youth can apply for, for those positions with your offices. And it goes up to what age? 24? Yes. Okay. I believe that's right. Is that right? Very, very good. Yes. Was, Kiana tells me yes, 24. Okay. I was very, very glad. And then finally, um, um, commissioners, I wanted to ask um, our county's administrator, um, the nature of governing, um, it has an element of accountability. Uh, and the nature of governing uh, has um, an essence of uh, knowing what money is doing. Is it safe, secure? Uh, is it vanishing? And I wanted to ask our county administrator, in light of uh, reports uh, of a local government in Tallahassee can't keep up with their money, or it's being swindled, or uh, a word like that. Uh, Mr. Administrator, is the financial health of Leon County government and our money secure? Is it audited? Uh, can we can we hold our heads up that 
Ain't no shame in our game with respect to our money. Sir, can you please comment on the stability of our funds, our accounts, whether well, piracy is occurring, uh, is we tied in right? Madam Chair, yes, Commissioner please. Proctor, yeah, thank you. I can, I can, I can do that. Uh, we have uh, independent audits that are conducted on an annual basis, and included in the purview of those audits are an examination of internal controls um, related to uh, accounts payable and, and lots of other uh, uh, items that are included there. Um, we have clean audits, and we have, uh, in, in the last several years, no notes of, of, of any kind related to um, any of that which you speak to. So, yes, we're in very good shape. Good, good, good. Commissioners, I, uh, I, was, I wanted to ask that question publicly to the county's administrator uh, in light of uh, all kinds of reports about missing money. And we don't have that report. Uh, we ain't never had that kind of report. And this is just another factor in terms of talking about our internationally recognized administrator. Uh, the fact that our ship is fiscally tight and right. Our numbers, uh, if they're published, those numbers, are, they mean something. You can bank on it. Uh, all of that right there matters in terms of the character and integrity of leadership. And Vince, I wanted to compliment you for the years with which we haven't heard uh, lost money, missing money, and stuff ain't tight and right. So thank you for the accountability that accounting principles affords and that the transparency of, um, to the public what our money stands for, where our money is going, all of that matters. My final point today, um, uh, county attorney, uh, $11.4 million is collected from unincorporated uh, citizens, residents, businesses. And the city literally transfers all of that amount to the general fund. Um, what, what can we do not to be the, the, the third party, the in-between, the go-between that's collecting money from the county that is not being used for fire services because of the $51 million, 22%, uh, and that's the amount that we collect. That's the amount we collect from unincorporated areas. It, it don't go in the coffers. In the meantime, those who serve... Uh, unincorporated areas uh, with fire care and protection. Uh, they're being told that it's not enough money for them. Why are we collecting money named fire service fee and the money is not there to undergird and to sustain uh, salaries of fire persons? Yet our community has had nearly a 9% uh, increase in city property taxes to undergird and specifically to sustain the police force. We have a fee that raises the money to take care of fire needs and our county's government. This is a consolidated, this is a functional de facto consolidated agency of city and county that we put in the money, but we are soliciting money that is not being used. And I'm tired of that. What can we do? Or is there a statutory mandate that forces us to take money from our citizens that is not going to uh, the needs of fire? And when that money is taken away and transferred from fire, God only knows we don't know how to track it when it goes into the city's uh, general fund. Something's wrong about that. I don't feel good about charging people for a service. And we went up on these people $38, and none of that money is being used for all of it. 
all $11.4 million we take up goes to someplace else. Something is wrong. We're being used like stooges. And what can we do? Are we duty bound? Can you just give us a general report of what the standing of this fire service is? And, and, and if we duty bound to be the ones to help fool these people out their money and the city's not using their money for purposes to sustain fire. Yes, please, Madam Attorney. Thank you, Madam Chair. So the board may recall that it was time's a little fluid, but in the last year or so, we actually retained an outside consultant in conjunction with the city of Tallahassee to conduct um, a basically a rate study. Uh, and uh, that independent uh, consultant looked at the different geographical areas. Uh, in fact, Commissioner Proctor, I remember at the time you were sitting across from me because I remember you were asking questions about the quality of the fire service being provided in certain areas uh, at the time. Uh, again, the consultant, which that's what they do, they conduct rate studies, that's their expertise, evaluated what rates were appropriate for different types of service, whether it was commercial, residential, that sort of thing, in the different areas. They brought that the results of that rate study back to this board, and this board adopted a fee schedule of rates that were then imposed upon residents in the unincorporated area. So those, this body has established those rates based upon the, the, the work of an outside consultant. Um, we have an interlocal agreement with uh, the city of Tallahassee, which has the fire department, which provides those services in the unincorporated area because we, aside from our voluntary fire departments, do not have our, our own. Um, I, I can't speak to what the city does with the money once they get it, though. I, I don't have any information about that. Madam Chair, I appreciate the county attorney, and I do remember uh, those consultants coming mm -hmm. to us. And we ended up, uh, I guess, increasing from, I believe, $185 to $223 uh, per household. And um, commissioners, uh, my point is that none of the money that we take up is actually left in the uh, five services account. All of the money that we collect is actually transferred to the general fund. Now the question is, when you move that money to the to the general fund coming out of fire services, is there an expect in budgeting, is that money earmarked or denoted as a revenue stream? And how is it projected that you're gonna get eleven million dollars to cover this, 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 this? But, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> It, it, is it told, foretold that $11 million will go into the general fund directly from the fire services? I think that we need uh, to roll back fire service. I feel like there's no need for $11 million. I feel like we're overcharging the community. I feel like for the last several years, uh, over 20% of all monies collected is not used in fire services. Uh, something is dreadfully wrong to charge American citizens for a fee. Uh, they don't get to vote for the city commission. This is, uh, uh, this is a fee exation without representation. They say it's not a tax, it's a fee. So it's not taxation, it's fee exation without uh, a vote. So I'm deeply disturbed and I just lay that out to say $11 million that we're collecting uh, don't mean a thing and it's being used uh, for purposes unrelated to uh, fire. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank, Thank you. you, Commissioner Proctor. Commissioner Cabana. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I don't really have any business to discuss, but I do have a few thank yous that I would like to make publicly. Um, first off, I just want to thank you, Madam Chair, for allowing us to have a robust you know, conversation earlier today about Lake Munson. Um, I like that you allow us to um, go back and forth on certain issues and, and really come to a common ground that really works for the community, so thank you. Um, additionally, you know, I've, I've sat up here and thanked the Florida Department of Transportation a few times, but 
I do want to just give them another public um, acknowledgement and thank you. They are being extremely good to District 2 here in Leon County. Uh, just recently we reached out to their office to asking about um, the intersection of Woodville Highway and Natural Bridge Road. We get a frequent complaint from our constituents down there, from the school, from folks going to church on Sunday, about not being able to pull out or get, uh, get across Woodville Highway. And we reached out to their office to see if they would do a, a study to see if a, a traffic light was needed. And they got back to us immediately and said, no problem. And so I just want to give a, um, a thank you again to them and, and Secretary Gaynor for all the work that they're doing. Additionally, um, the Fort Brayton sidewalk is coming along. Um, thank you to, to Public Works and, and all the work that they are doing. Um, getting a lot of positive feedback about that from folks in the community. And it is a, um, it's actually an emergency evacuation route for Fort Brayton School out there. And so I'm really excited to see that come to fruition. Um, lastly, this weekend, this, this Saturday, is the, the first Fort Brayton Farmer's Market um, kickoff. So if you, any of you folks have, uh, my colleagues have Saturday morning open, uh, my at-large commissioners, colleagues, if you guys like to come join us, um, I will be there. Just bring some money so you can uh, sh share the wealth around. <laughs> so thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Caban. Commissioner Minor. Thank you, Madam Chair. I may not have enough time to deliver comments before 6 p.m., uh, but I'll continue if that's... We've got about five minutes before 6 p.m. Uh, public hearing start. It's before 5. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> I don't have my glasses on, so I'm kind of squinting. Yes, thank you, thank you. Sorry about that. Well, I did have about an hour and a half for the comments hour. I was going to make. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. Okay, see, all right. I was see, just testing everybody here. just want to make sure. See, that's why I didn't look at the clips at all yesterday. I didn't do that. <laughs> all right. I will not take as long as, as that. So, All right. Um, <laughs> okay, I, I think I want to talk about an issue that I think we probably all have in our districts, and, and the two at-large folks for sure. Um, I have neighborhoods where the neighbors have take great care of, of maintaining their homes and their yards as best they can, um, but often, in, in, a, in, a, in a couple of them in particular, um, there's, there's one property that is an eyesore for the rest of the neighborhood. In one case, you've had a, a property that's been condemned, You've got, you know, uh, plywood boards on the windows. Um, there are rodents coming into the home and, and, and causing a health hazard for the neighbors nearby. Uh, I've got a, another example where um, the, the yards are just not mowed and the weeds are as high as, as a person. Um, and so I've, I've had discussions with, with the surrounding neighbors in these cases and many discussions with the county administrator about code compliance and. I think we've got some pretty decent code compliance policies. Um, it's a balance between property rights of the property owner versus maintaining the overall aesthetics of our neighborhood for the common good. Um, and making sure that one property owner doesn't negatively impact the owners nearby. Right? So it's, it's that delicate balance. Um, but one thing that the county administrator and I have talked about is, is what can we do to help those neighbors that are in situations where there's a property that is, frankly, degrading the rest of the neighborhood. So what I'd like to do, I'll wait till Commissioner Proctor's done. Well, you can continue. Commissioner well, I'd like, to, I'd like to make sure he hears what I say. <laughs> it's all right, I'll go. But so, so what I'd like to do is, is propose, make a motion for the county administrator to um, provide to us, each of us, just some uh, materials, some directions on what we can give directly to our neighbors that kind of explain in, in some easy to read detail the, the, the complaint process. How do, you, how do you file a complaint? What are, the, what are the code compliance regulations that our county staff will consider when it comes to deciding whether or not someone is out of compliance? Um, and then finally, there are other options available to our, our neighbors, such as creating a covenant within their neighborhood. Um, because, you know, what might be uh, a standard in one neighborhood might be completely different in another. And so it's difficult for us as a county to have county-wide policies because there's so much diversity in our neighborhoods. So my motion is to ask the county administrator to provide those types of materials to us so that we can pass those on to our constituents, um, our neighborhoods, and have them um, take that next step 
have them decide what they want to do. If, if there are neighbors that feel, that feel a complaint is in order, they can make that complaint. Um, if they want to get a better understanding of, of the code requirements, they have an easy way for them to take a look at code compliance. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, if they, if they decide to go the, the covenant route, where they want to have specific things related to their neighborhood, they have the beginnings of that process right there, and we can help them along. So that's my motion. I'd like to see if there might be a second for that, because I, I think it is applies there, to everybody is here. Motion, is second by Commissioner Caban. Are you okay is with that? Second? Yeah. Okay, okay, all those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Okay, comments? Okay, Commissioner O'Keefe, then Commissioner yeah. Caban. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Commissioner O'Keefe. I, I, I thought we were going to vote on the motion. Um, but he has comments before we vote on it. Okay, so vote it. let him gotcha. have his comments, then Commissioner Caban has comments. Thank you. Um, I'll just uh, briefly, um, it is a problem. We have, uh, you know, I've heard from plenty of constituents that we help them through the code complaint process. Um, I, I'm not going to support it because we have those processes. And um, I know the experience of being in those houses where other people complain about it. And for me, for example, I, if this was just paperwork and information, I'm fine. But if it's kind of assisting with paperwork of adding covenants, people make choices. I'm, I chose to live in a place with no HOA and no covenants for a reason. And people can choose to live where there's an HOA and covenants for a reason if they want to. So I'll, for that reason, I'll be opposing. Thank you, Commissioner O'Keefe. Commissioner Cobain. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I appreciate you bringing this up, Commissioner Meyer, because this is actually an issue. Um, we get, we've gotten a lot of frequent complaints lately from folks in uh, the Seminole Manor neighborhood in my district, and then folks out in Fort Braden as well, just from issues with, with code enforcement and, and what those procedures look like. So I just want to say I do appreciate you bringing it up. Um, my question on the motion is, is this something to just bring back, like, informative? Are we looking at making a change? Um, you know. Madam Chair. His, his motion was in information. Yes. For the Ma county administrator. Madam Chair, yes. This is purely informative. It's basically, informative. you know, helping us, um, um, giving us some materials that we can pass on to our neighbors so that they can make the best decisions and we can help them along the way. Okay. But no changes in policy. Right. Thank Madam you. And, and I do know that the, the city does have their own specific provisions. Uh, I'm not sure if it's an, an ordinance uh, or what, where, um, Properties that are in disrepair, yards, what have you, they have um, provisions in place to, to deal with that. Uh, and I think the eventual, if it's not um, complied with, I think there, there are monetary liens that are placed against the property up to the point of maybe selling the property. And they can go up into the thousands and thousands of dollars. But anyway, any other Comments hearing none. All those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Nay. Okay. Uh, then, one opposition, Commissioner O'Keefe. Okay. Yep. And Go thank ahead, you, ma'am. I just had one more thing. I, um, uh, as was noted earlier, um, we had a federal appropriation of eight hundred thousand dollars from the federal government uh, for the restoration of Ford's Arm at Lake Jackson. And uh, that is a really big deal for that part of Lake Jackson. I, um, a lot of work went into it from a lot of people. Uh, nothing like this happens without a large group of people working very hard. So I just, I want to thank Nikki Patton and Ken Morris and our federal lobbyists at uh, Squire Patton Boggs for advocating for it. Uh, I want to thank President Joe Biden for signing it. I want to thank Congress for passing it. And I want to thank Congressman Neil Dunn for sponsoring the legislation. So. Um, thanks to all of you, uh, and uh, the, the people uh, along Lake Jackson are very happy about this and uh, looking forward to some uh, improvements in the water quality in that area. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. A minor, very, very appropriate. Thank you. Commissioner O'Keefe. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I want to uh, thank Mr. Sims for bringing up what, what sounds like a great idea um, for considering establishing uh, one qualification, adding to the many of the nature of appointees to the Leon County Affordable Housing Advisory Committee. Um, and so I was looking through it, and um, it, is, it is just established by the county. And right now we have nine members um, and a handful of ways people can qualify, um, being part of an organization that deals with housing. Um, we appoint um, our fellow commissioner, Commissioner Maddox, and there are currently nine seats. There can be 11. There are two vacant. 
Um, but I believe those require, we could just, my, my first thought was we could just decide to let people know we would like to appoint someone who has experienced an eviction or is currently in a rental situation that is um, assisted with some sort of assistance, whether it be voucher or income limited or anything like that. But by looking at it, I believe that the person has to qualify under one of the nine or ten qualifications, and that's not one of the listed. Um, is that correct? Uh, Do you know, Madam Kennedy? Yes. Oh, Ms. Sure. The, uh, for that committee in particular, what you're seeing as the qualifications are um, statutorily required for that specific committee. But we may have some legal uh, wiggle room. I was just talking to Ken offline here. We'd be happy to bring that back to the board. I totally get where you're coming from and, and what you'd like to see. And if we've got the wiggle room, uh, we'll, we'll bring that back. And if we don't, we'll, we'll certainly let you know. Excellent. To make it official, I, I, I move that we ask staff to bring back an item uh, telling us um, for us to consider adding a qualification to one of the members of the Affordable Housing Advisory Committee for someone that currently uh, benefits from rental assistance of any kind or has experienced evictions at a future meeting. Okay. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Cobain. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Anything further? No. Um, excuse me, Mr. Sims. We're a team. Um, no. Uh, okay. Are y'all cousins? <laughs> okay, Mr. Sims, refrain. Okay. okay, Commissioner Maddox. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, I've just got a couple of things. I received a letter from the Florida Department of State indicating that the John G. Riley House is being considered, uh, well, there's a proposed nomination for the Riley House to be part of the National Register of Historic Places. Uh, Riley House is right here, so I thought that that was something that the board needs to be aware of. Um, the first meeting starting the process is May the 2nd, and they've given a webinar address. And so what I can do, if anybody might be interested, um, we can make copies of this and give it to the commissioners. But I thought that that was great just to be considered and being a, a proposed nominee for the National Register of Historic Places. I, I'll just pass, pass the letter around and you guys can, uh, can see it. Uh, the other thing I'd like to uh, mention is this coming Friday, April the 12th at 7 o'clock p.m., the Florida A&M University is um, recognizing the fact that the football team is the SWAC champions. And so they're having a SWAC championship ring reception. So the players are getting their championship rings. So I think that's awesome. So it'll be this Friday evening uh, at 7 o'clock at the Grand Ballroom. Okay, there are, there are, in the Leon County, let me read this again. I believe Leon County is a sponsor. Leon County is the sponsor. So I think that's great that we are, we are supporting. Uh, at this time, I want to ask um, former county commissioner, Ms. Margaret Turnbull, if she will come to, to, the, uh, to the podium. We'd just like to recognize her. She might have a comment. Let's recognize her with a round of applause. Madam Chair, this is totally unexpected, but thank you. It, it's a pleasure to sit here and see the orderly manner in which this commission carries out its business. So thank you for what you do for the people of Leon County. And thank you, Commissioner Welsh, for addressing a need that we at Westminster Oaks have been concerned about. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. Wait, hold on a minute. Some other commissioners might have a, com might have a comment. Commissioner Welch. I would just like to say... Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Turnbull, for, for 
advocating so hard for your community, even in retirement, still <laughs> advocating for your community, and obviously very proud to have you as a resident of District 4. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Minor. You know, uh, uh, Commissioner Turnbull, you complimented us for our um, civility during this meeting, but it's only because you're here. We're on our best behavior. <laughs> <laughs> We're always civil here. <laughs> um, listen, I'm sorry. every time I have a chance to work with you, it's like a, it's like a ray of sunshine. It really is. And um, I, I, I don't know if I can speak for everybody. Actually, I'm going to take the liberty of, of speaking for everybody here and saying that when we all grow up, we want to be like Marjorie Turnbull. Oh, so thank you for being here. It's always good to see you, ma'am. Thank you. Commissioner Turnbull, I wanted to say uh, uh, I talked to Mr. Um, Stormont Lewis down in Woodville today earlier, and um, I found myself saying to him um, that after all of these years, uh, uh, for some reason, it, certain constituents begin to feel like family members. Um, yeah, um, and I, I think that I'm sure that Vince Long understands what I'm about to say, and Nick. Maddox is probably growing to that level uh, and state of, of um, feeling. Um, but after so long, you acquire a sense of family uh, in terms of doing county governance. And you've seen familiar faces, uh, sound minds, uh, orderly, uh, professional uh, deportment of uh, a, a towering states lady like yourself over the years. And you've always been a high representative and standard, even in the Florida House of Representatives. So we have seen you, uh, your level of civility is second to nobody. And uh, you've always been a standard bearer of persons who've uh, been on this, uh, this particular board. Um, as well you know, uh, I have never held that torch of civility as high. And um, you also know I've never been a standard bearer of good manners and proper decorum. But you, you've been excellent, and uh, to God be the glory, and uh, I really respect and honor you, your work and service. Uh, I'm just reaching a point now of uh, it just means so much to see people have been very special in our community for so long. So thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Commissioner. No, thank you. In, any uh, Commissioner Maddox? Madam Chair, I, I uh, have a long working relationship since I've been on the commission with Commissioner Turnbull. She is uh, one of the commissioners I can say that, that, that truly trusts the process. It's one thing to be on the commission and, and do work, but it's another thing to be outside of the commission, know what we do, but still have another confidence in the process to trust that when she brings an issue to us that we'll address it. And I've always appreciated the humbleness that that takes uh, being on the outside, knowing what it is to sit here, but then trusting the process and trusting us enough to allow us to work things through the process without um, implementing your own expertise, because we know you know this stuff almost as good as not better than us. Uh, and so I, I appreciated that. And, and secondly, coming out of Women, Women's History Month, uh, you set the tone for the strength and the stature and the, uh, the professional nature of the women that came after you on this commission and Commissioner uh, Chairwoman uh, Cummings certainly exemplifies that but if, as I think about the strong women that I've served with the Commissioner uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Dozier and others uh, it just it just seeing you stand there really 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 warms my heart because I know the kind of ground that you laid not just at the county but also at the state level for uh, young ladies who want to come behind you and, and lead in the way that you've led. And I appreciate that. Thank you. Commissioner O'Keefe. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you, Commissioner Turnbull. Uh, I don't know what else I can add, um, but um, thank you. You're a great example of being commissioner. And I'll share it to no one else's surprise. When I first started, uh, some of the first meetings I had were with groups um, led by, no offense to your other counterparts, but led by Commissioner Turnbull about issues. And um, everything was prepared and right. How do you say it, Commissioner Proctor? Tight and right. Um, and so right. thank you for continuing to serve our community. Thank you, Commissioner O'Keefe. Uh, and thank you. Commissioner Turnbull, I certainly echo all of the sentiments of all my fellow commissioners up here. But more than them, I know that I 
stand partially on your shoulders too as well as on the shoulders of other women that have sat up here. So we certainly honor you. We appreciate you. And even in your retirement, you're still advocating just like you were a strong advocate up here when you were a member of the commission. So thank you. And we appreciate your presence with us today. May God bless you. Thank you. Let's give a round of applause. Uh, now, commit, uh, Commissioner Proctor. I'm sure I just want to ask, do we, have, what? We, have we um, captured her name and commemorated her name on any public facility? I think that's something that we should look to. Thank you, uh, commissioners and audience. At this point, we will take a recess until 6 o'clock. We have four public hearings, so we'll be back at 6. Thank you.